When you tell a story about a child, you tell a story about trust and love and hope. When you tell a story about a child, you tell a story about what tomorrow can be. When you tell a story about a child, you tell a story about all of us. We'd like to tell you a story about a child. Polly Whittier? Are you my Aunt Polly? No, child. I'm Nancy Palmer. I work for your aunt. She would have come down and fetched you, but she got lots of important meetings this afternoon. She's a pretty important lady, huh? Mm-hmm. One of the most importantest. We'll get you over to the house as soon as we get the rest of your luggage. That is the rest of my luggage. Well, then, let's get scratching. Come on, the car's across the street. into you when I got back into town, but this isn't what I had in mind. Dr. Shannon, what brings you back? <laughs> Fishing season. So who's your friend? This is Miss Harrington's niece. Oh, really? Smile for me, girl. Oh, yeah, yeah. I recognize that smile, all right. <laughs> Though it's been a while. So what's your name, Aunt Polly's niece? I'm Polly. Oh, named after the other Polly, huh? Well, you keep on smiling, girl. You got a good one even if it doesn't get used much around here. I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Ooh, come on, child. We got some news to deliver home. Is it me? Am I news? Well, you're full of pep and vinegar. And in the Harrington house, yeah, I'd say that's good news. Get on in there. Reverend Gillis, it lacks dignity. And whereas it is not my position to choose the topic of Sunday sermon, still I think we need to take into account that a certain authority is needed. Uh, authority, yes, yes, I surely can understand that. A uh, preacher must have authority over his congregation. Does that mean that you'll change the topic of your sermon to something more meaningful? Uh, meaningful, uh, yes. <laughs> I believe it does, if that's what you want it to mean. If it isn't... What I want is to impress upon parishioners that life is serious, life is real. They're only in church for an hour a week. And if this town is to thrive sooner or later, they've got to come to... <sighs> yes, Nancy, what is it? Your niece is here, ma'am. Oh, yes, of course. Come on.
Well, come closer, child. Come on. Turn around, let me get a look at you. Is that the kind of dress little girls in Detroit wear? My daddy got this out of the missionary barrels at his church. His church? Is your father a minister child? Her father, Reverend Gillis, the gentleman who married my sister, was a deacon in a small church in Detroit, and he and his wife were in an automobile accident. And that's why my niece has come to stay with me now. Doing your Christian duty, Miss Harrington. That'll be written down in the book. Is something wrong with my dress? No, dear, your dress is fine. Just a little faded. My dad said I should be glad it wasn't a pair of boys' pants. They might have cooties. That's very nice, I'm sure. I think it's time that Nancy took you to your room now. My room? My own room? Yes. Won't people get awfully messed up, though? Messed up about what? Two Pollys, me and you. Won't that get them coming when they're going? Well, you are Polly, you see. Nobody calls me Polly. Miss Harrington, yes. But no one has called me Polly for years. Didn't that Dr. Shannon even call her Polly? You saw Dr. Shannon? Uh, yes, ma'am. He said he came back for fishing season. Well, Nancy, take her to her room. Yes, where were we? Don't be talking about Dr. Shannon. And your Aunt Polly, well, just don't be. Why? Doesn't she like Dr. Shannon? Doc Shannon? Who's talking Doc Shannon? Polly, this is Mrs. Connolly. Mrs. Connolly. This is Polly. <laughs> well, you a little runchy, aren't you, child? I'm as big as I know how to get. I was just about to take Polly upstairs to her room. You was, but now you're not. You know who is waiting for you out by the carriage house. He is? Mm. Who is? Never you mind who is. You got a room to see and a person to take you there. And you got to tell me about Dr. Shannon coming back to town. I got some things to tell you, too. Like what? Supper's at 6. And don't you be late. Miss Harrington has herself a conniption when folks are late for supper. Now, I got most of the dust gone from your room this morning. But there's still lots more for me to do. You don't have to do any more. I'll get it clean. <laughs> Little girl. <laughs> don't you understand? You are living in the Harrington house now. You are the niece of the richest black lady in the county. And you have to act like it. Hmm. Like it or not. Uh, don't you be late for supper. I won't. Pretty baby, don't look so blue Cause whatever's been troubling you You can reach out to me And you know that I'll be by your side By your side What a very long day it's been And though mama can't help 
with these baby shoes will never get clean. I... Ah, Miss Harrington, Miss Harrington, we are profoundly inundated with maximum pleasure at the honor that your presence brings to our simple establishment. Mr. Furch, my niece. Ah, my niece needs clothes, Mr. Furch. Clothes befitting her station. Ah, well, consider it done, Miss Harrington. We're um, here to serve you. Well, of course you are. I'm leaving the car with you. I'm meeting Miss Tarbell for tea. Then we're going back to the house for a meeting with the orphanage board. Don't be too long. We won't, ma'am. I'll uh, leave this little lamb with you ladies. Call me when it's time to add up the bill. Is that all that radio knows how to play? What do you mean? Do you think it has any Detroit music in there? Detroit music? Yeah, but if I'm going to be a special lady in this town with straw ball clothes, I need some music that knows how to bop de bop de bop You want to hear some music that does what? I want to hear some music that knows how to bop de bop de bop I'm going to...